When you go on vacation, all you want to do is check into a fancy hotel and let the bed, pool, and bellhops help you to forget about your life's worries. However, hotels aren't all about fresh linens and room service. Turns out the hospitality industry is hiding some incredibly dark and straight-up bizarre secrets from their guests. So today, we're going to remove our Do Not Disturb signs and ruin all of our future vacations as we check in and check out thieving cleaners, sickening stains, and even an international secret society. Let's unveil the secrets hotels don't want you to know. Bed bugs. With delayed flights, turbulence, and airplane food, going on vacation can be a pretty stressful experience. So when you finally arrive at your destination, there's no better feeling than checking into your hotel room and finally sliding into some clean bed sheets. Unfortunately, these freshly clean linens might be hiding something sinister and much more common than most folks assume. You could be unknowingly snuggling up to some unwanted bedmates. Every year, over 80% of hotels will deal with a bed bug infestation as their rooms get taken over by a swarm of the blood-sucking insects. Oh boy, this is interesting. Whether you're staying in a grimy motel room or a penthouse suite, the average hotel will face around seven infestations every five years, so nobody is safe. These infestations can consist of up to 500 insects, but unfortunately, they can be incredibly hard to find. Bed bugs hide from the light in any available cracks and crevices surrounding the bed, headboard, or in the seams of mattresses, and typically only come out at night to feed. Their main calling card is when a guest wakes up in the morning covered in painful, itchy bites. If you're unlucky enough to stay in a bed bug infested room, the critters might end up ruining more than your vacation. We're all guilty of stealing little bottles of shampoo at the end of our vacations, but if you stay in a room infested with bed bugs, you might go home with a slightly scarier souvenir. Bed bugs are notorious for climbing onto vacationers' clothes or suitcases and traveling all the way home with them before infesting their houses. So next time you enter a hotel room, you'd be best to carry out some thorough checks for any telltale signs of bed bugs or the dark red and black waste they leave behind. Otherwise, you could be going home with a souvenir that'll leave you having to bug bomb your entire house. Do not drink. The thought of sleeping in a room full of bed bugs is pretty disgusting, right? I could certainly use a glass of water to calm my nerves, but apparently I shouldn't use any of the glasses kept in my hotel room. In 2012, former hotel employee Jacob Tomsky released a tell-all book on the hotel industry's dirty secrets, in which he explicitly told vacationers to avoid using hotels' glasses as lots of housekeepers allegedly clean them with furniture polish. In the book Heads and Beds, Jacob revealed that it was a common insider secret that cleaners would regularly save time by using pledge to clean drinking glasses ensuring they were clean and sparkling without having to actually wash them up. While this was reportedly done due to tight high-pressure time deadlines on cleaning staff, it doesn't make it any less disturbing. Although the residual polish left in the cups shouldn't be enough to severely harm you, drinking even small amounts of polish can reportedly lead to dizziness, stomach pain, vomiting, and worse, truly putting the hospital in hospitality. Hey, on the bright side, your water will taste citrusy and your body's chemically burnt insides will be squeaky clean. If you're not disturbed by this ghastly glassware, an undercover journalist in China caught a housekeeper doing something even more sinister back in 2018. The cleaner working at a five-star hotel in Harbin, China was snapped using the same brush to clean the room's toilet and cups. The hotel fired the cleaner after seeing the secret camera footage, but just because that gross housekeeper was caught doesn't mean there aren't others out there. Next time I travel, I think I'll stick to the sealed bottles of water in the minibar, even if they do cost about $1,000 each. Valet parking hijinks. Cleaning glasses with pledge and poop water is pretty disturbing, but hotel staff can do far worse things than serve you with dirty dishes they could wind up costing you thousands of dollars. Luxury hotels aim to cater to your every need, and so lots of them offer valet services where a worker will park your vehicle for you when you arrive at the hotel before retrieving it when you want to leave. The service is supposed to save you time and effort, 
But back in 2015, a guest at a hotel in Miami Beach, Florida was left to pay a small fortune in repairs after asking a valet to park his $200,000 Lamborghini Aventador. For the valet, driving a Lamborghini was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So as he hopped into the car, he decided to channel his inner Vin Diesel by revving the engine and burning some rubber. Unfortunately, as the valet started to rev the supercar, its engine overheated and burst into flames. A heroic passerby managed to extinguish the fire, but the damage to the Lamborghini was extensive, and there's a good chance that the owner of the Lamborghini had to pay to fix it. Why? Well, back in 2020, financial information company DeFacto discovered that 49% of car insurance policies don't cover any damages sustained while your car is being driven by a valet. And the companies that do offer coverage will only help with superficial damage like scratched paint. In other words, if your valet crashes your car, you'll probably have to pay for the worst of the damage. So the solution is obvious. Always drive a clapped out piece of junk that no one in their right minds would ever want to take for a joyride. Unsafe safes. Most hotel rooms contain a small safe that allows you to securely leave your valuables in your room. However, these safes aren't as safe as they seem, and in most hotels, the staff know a universal code that allows them to access every safe in the building. This system was created so that if you ever forget the code to your safe, the hotel staff can easily open it up and retrieve your trapped valuables. However, it also gives hotel staff access to your most treasured belongings whenever they want, allowing any bad apples who have access to the code to easily rob you. We like to think we can trust the staff working in our hotels, but in 2019, an industry survey found that 43% of housekeepers anonymously admitted that they'd stolen personal belongings or cash from their guests' rooms. It turns out those perfectly pressed uniforms could be concealing opportunistic criminals. With housekeepers somewhat regularly caught on hidden cameras cleaning out their guests' luggage for cash, you might want to avoid storing your valuables in a safe that they can access, let alone leaving them unprotected in your suitcase. Luckily, there is a way to keep your valuables protected while on vacation. Most hotels contain safety deposit boxes behind their front desk that any guest can ask to use. This safe is usually insured against theft, which room safes by contrast usually are not. Fewer staff members will have access to a front desk safety deposit, making it a far safer safe than the one in your room. Conning Concierge Moving on to another way that hotel staff will attempt to earn some extra money at the expense of their guests now, a hotel's concierge is tasked with catering to their guests' every need, welcoming them to the hotel, booking them taxis, and giving restaurant recommendations. These concierge have to work long hours with a smile on their face, but despite the high demands of their job, they don't typically earn that much money. As a result, dissatisfied concierge have developed ways to earn a little bit of extra cash on the side by striking up under-the-table deals with local restaurants to send tours their way in exchange for a commission. Concierge are supposed to offer genuine recommendations, so those guilty of this shady practice will typically do this off the books using extreme tactics to make sure their guests go to the correct restaurants. There have been cases of guests asking their concierge for directions to a specific restaurant only to be aggressively pitched another place to eat. Similarly, concierge will actively criticize rival restaurants to make sure guests go to the ones that they've struck a deal with. Almost every hotel denies that this happens, claiming that their concierge offers unbiased help. However, according to the New York Times, it's an open secret that some of these underpaid workers rely on under-the-table deals to subsidize their income putting the con in concierge as they manipulate their guests to line their own pockets. The Golden Keys Although some hotel employees may be out to con you, most concierge generally want to help you. And if you want to avoid dealing with dishonest hotel staff, you should keep an eye out for concierge with the special symbol pinned to their lapel. This is the logo of Le Clé d'Or translating to the Golden Keys in English, which is an elite fraternity comprised of the world's best concierge. Since being founded as a small secretive group in France in 1929 and expanding into an international group in 1952, the Golden Keys now have over 4,000 members working in luxury hotels all over the world. The group's motto is, we are your key to everything, and it's their job to cater to their guests' every need. 
And unsurprisingly, guests of the world's most expensive hotels often have some pretty unique requests. Memorable examples of Le Clay d'Or's incredible customer service include shipping breast milk across the Atlantic, kept fresh using a liquid nitrogen-cooled container for a new mother whose business trip had to be extended while her baby was back home in Boston. Or the time staff were tasked with renting an elephant and transporting it to a hotel in London for a Bollywood-themed wedding. Unsurprisingly, the Golden Keys group is incredibly selective in its membership, and to join, you need to be recommended by two active members, have at least two years of experience as a concierge, and take a final 10-page exam that can take anywhere from 5 to 20 hours to complete. The process is so demanding that if you spot a concierge wearing the golden keys, you're pretty much guaranteed to receive incredible customer service. As a result, hotels who don't have a golden keys concierge would very likely prefer for the group's existence to be kept under wraps, so people don't overlook their hotels due to their concierge service being perceived as inferior. Of course, there are only 4,000 Le Clay d'Or members in the world, so the chances of your hotel boasting one is actually incredibly low. But still, if you're ever lucky enough to stay in a luxury hotel, you should check if their head concierge is a member, as those golden keys can be the key to an incredible vacation. Professional Stalkers Hotels want their customer service to feel as friendly and familiar as possible, so they've always kept logs on their regular guests tracking information about their previous stays and complaints to tailor their next visit to their personal likes and dislikes. Today, the rise of technology has allowed hotels to take this to another level by using your social media to build an insanely detailed profile on your interests, hobbies, and personality traits before you even make it to the hotel. In a 2013 interview, a rep at the Beverly Hills Hotel nonchalantly revealed a time where she ran a background check on a guest before their arrival in order to gather information to tailor their experience. Looking up the person online, they discovered that they owned a small dog called Bo. When the guest arrived, the rep had placed a doggy gift bag in their room along with a handwritten note saying, Bo misses you. Is it just me or is that creepy as heck? Similarly, restauranteur Danny Mayer has described a time when he was forced to travel for work on Father's Day, staying at the Little Nell in Aspen, Colorado. When a homesick Danny arrived in his room, he found that the hotel staff had printed a photo of his wife and children off of social media before placing it in a frame on his bedside table. The experience was somewhere between a heartwarming tale and an unnerving violation of personal privacy. This level of customer service is starting to become more common, though, and when you next go on vacation, there's a chance that your hotel will have already scoured through your social media before you arrive. This attention to detail is pretty impressive, but is this taking customer service too far? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I didn't see nothing. As we've seen, hotels can use social media to gather a lot of information about their guests' private lives, including their marital status. As a result, when a guest checks in with a romantic partner who isn't their spouse, the hotel staff are likely to realize what's going on. Still, even if a hotel does discover that a guest is cheating on their partner, they typically won't expose their affair. A brand coordinator at the Wynn Hotel in Las Vegas has stated that hotel employees are told to never reveal any info about guests, not about any people accompanying them, to anyone who calls up the hotel, even if it's the guest's spouse. They won't even verify whether or not a guest is actually staying there whatsoever. Similarly, in 2017, an ex innkeeper called Tammy Long revealed on Quora that at her historic inn in Vermont, if a guest left an item behind in their room after checking out, the inn would never call them to return it. Tammy explained that she introduced the rule after calling a male guest about a lost item and getting through to his wife. The guest's wife was shocked, telling Tammy that she thought her husband was at a convention in Toledo, Ohio, and she had no idea he was staying at a hotel with a woman. Tammy realized that she'd accidentally exposed her guests' infidelity, so from that point on, she told her staff to never call guests to return an item. Although telling somebody that their husband is cheating on them is the morally correct thing to do, these are ultimately places of business and ruining a guest's marriage isn't going to get you any good reviews. 
As a result, if you think you've left an item behind in your hotel room, you might have to call them to get it back. Otherwise, they'll just assume you're a dirty cheat. Scare B&B Unfortunately, when you use an app like Airbnb to stay at someone's private residence, there's quite a bit more risk than staying at an established hotel. Since being founded in 2007, Airbnb has become one of the largest hospitality companies in the world, with over 1.4 billion guests and 4 million hosts using the app. Most of these hosts have good intentions, but there are several cases of people listing their property on the app with sinister motives, like spying on their guests. Since Airbnb's inception, there have been hundreds of cases of people discovering cameras hidden inside their rooms, light fixtures, fire alarms, power adapters, and Wi-Fi routers. These cameras are clearly intended to spy on unsuspecting guests, and they're often positioned to face the Airbnb's bed or shower. Gross. Airbnb have responded to these countless discoveries by banning the offending hosts and increasing their background checks on new hosts joining the app. This is reassuring, but Airbnb can only deal with these offenders after they've been caught, and if you want to guarantee your Airbnb is camera-free, you might have to take matters into your own hands. If you turn off the lights and shine a flashlight on the electronic appliances in your Airbnb, a hidden camera lens will reflect the light back at you. As a result, if you shine the light at an appliance and you see a bluish reflection or even a visible lens, you should pack your bags and leave, or at the very least tape over those spots, because there's a chance your host is using a camera to watch you get changed, shower, or in my case, eat everything in the minibar and cry myself to sleep. Terrifying stuff. Staff Secrets whether they're stalking your Facebook profile or watching you through secret cameras, some shady hospitality workers seem to know a lot about their guests' private lives and dirty secrets. So I think it's about time we expose some of theirs. In 2014, a maid working at a five-star hotel in Orlando gave an anonymous interview explaining what housekeepers get up to when their managers aren't looking. First, the housekeeper explained that if they're tasked with cleaning a large suite, they'll be given a little bit of extra time to make sure it's spotless. Instead of spending this extra time cleaning, the interviewee's colleagues would often just nap in the room's bed. You can't sleep on an empty stomach, and in 2016, another housekeeper anonymously admitted that they never buy lunch, choosing instead to eat portions of their guests' room service orders en route to their rooms. Once the housekeepers have filled up on their guests' dinner, they'll regularly use the toilet in the hotel room that they're supposed to be cleaning, dropping a deuce while the guests are away. I guess all that stolen food has to go somewhere. These interviewed housekeepers also revealed that sometimes they'll seek revenge against rude or irritating guests. The cleaner from Orlando recounted that in one instance, one of her colleagues was so angry at a rude customer that she decided to clean the bathroom floor with their bath towel before hanging it back up for the guests to use. This seems pretty harsh, but they made it clear that staff usually only mess with their most impolite visitors. Seems reasonable to me. Not my cup of tea. Let's move from housekeepers with bad habits to guests as we look at a group of disgusting vacationers and air out their dirty laundry, literally. Back in 2017, a tweet from Guy Bloomberg went viral as he asked his followers whether any of them used the kettle in their hotel rooms to wash their dirty underwear. Typically, a kettle is used to boil water and make hot drinks like tea, but according to Guy, he'd caught wind that folk out there are regularly using the appliances to boil their briefs instead. As the story went viral, some Twitter users started expressing their disgust, while others admitted that they had indeed used kettles to clean their dirty underpants. Before long, molecular biologist Dr. Heather Hendrickson weighed in on the issue, explaining that the practice isn't just gross, it's also a genuine health hazard. While boiling your underwear should kill most of the bacteria present in your tidy whities used underwear fabric can still commonly be riddled with heat-resistant microorganisms and spores that can survive temperatures of up to 248 degrees Fahrenheit, continuing to swim around in the kettle after being boiled. Some of these, like Clostidium botulinum spores, can produce a deadly toxin if consumed, so if another guest comes along and uses the contaminated kettle, it could put a dark spin on their next tea party. 
Hendrickson urged the offending hotel guests to stop putting other people in harm's way, but something tells me the people who decide to boil their underwear in a hotel kettle aren't particularly concerned about other people, so they're unlikely to stop the practice. So unless you take your tea with milk, sugar, and yesterday's sweet corn, you should probably consider sticking to bottled drinks the next time you stay in a hotel. Hidden filth. Next time I check into a hotel room, I'll definitely stay away from the kettle, but at least the rest of my room is clean, right? Well, back in 2014, journalist Jeff Rawson investigated five of the top hotel chains in America to see just how clean their rooms are at check-in. After conducting a series of tests, the Rawson Reports team discovered that all of the hotel rooms were filthy, with dangerous amounts of bacteria on the walls, furnishings, and beds. In every hotel, the TV remote was by far the dirtiest item tested, and in one room they found colonies of E. coli on the remote, a bacteria passed through human poop. If that wasn't bad enough, they found traces of MRSA on the remote in another hotel, a highly contagious antibiotic-resistant bacteria that can cause painful skin infections, fever, and even fatal sepsis. The investigators noted that none of this dangerous bacteria is visible to the naked eye, and they were present in rooms that looked spotless. Because of the near invisibility of most hotel room filth, lots of cleaning companies use UV lights to show people just how dirty their hotel rooms are. When UV light is shown on a surface, it causes certain substances like urine and saliva to emit different colored light in turn, identifying their presence. This fluorescence is an effect that can turn seemingly clean rooms into a Jackson Pollock painting of pee, spit, and God knows what else. These images are pretty horrifying, but they're also a little misleading as UV light also causes cleaning products like laundry detergent to fluoresce, so it can't always be used to reliably determine whether your hotel room is dirty or clean. But while both UV light and your own eyes may be a little unreliable when assessing the cleanliness of a hotel room, you can be pretty certain that at least some filth is lurking in there, so think about packing sunscreen and hand sanitizer on your next vacation. Dead and Breakfast One of the best kept secrets in the hospitality industry is that people die in hotels all the time and there's an incredibly high chance that you've stayed in a hotel room that once held a deceased guest. While roadside motels are hotbeds for crime-related expirations, it's also not uncommon for terminally ill people to finish up their lives in expensive hotels, opting to meet their maker surrounded by luxury. Hotels will go to great lengths to cover up these in-house passings, and as soon as the police and emergency workers gather all the info they need, the hotel will rush to clean up the mess. They'll call in specialized deep cleaning crews before removing any, uh, leftovers through staff hallways that are closed off to guests. Once the room is clean and empty, the hotel will try and get it booked again as quickly as possible, meaning that if the room is fully sanitized, they'll ideally want to reopen it to guests just 24 hours after finding the permanently checked out occupant. That being said, if you're worried your hotel room might have been recently occupied by the recently deceased, there are a few telltale signs to look out for. If the AC unit or light fixtures smell unpleasant or have a notable presence of flies, it could be a sign of previous organic decay in the room that wasn't fully sanitized by a cleanup crew, as these are areas which are fairly commonly missed. Noticing that a specific area of the room has been repainted or re-wallpapered can also be a clue that some hasty cleanup was required for a, uh, nasty mess in that zone. Worst of all, if you spot a slightly uneven bump on the wall about the size of a quarter, you could be looking at a hastily covered up bullet hole, in which case you may want to rethink your choice of hotel, motel, or holiday inn. Mini bars, Massive Prices now, what we just discussed is pretty nasty, but lots of hotels hold secrets that are arguably even more sinister. Like, the pricing of their minibars! <clears throat> if you've ever stayed in a hotel, you'll know that the minibar is a lawless place where a bottle of water costs $8 and a payday costs, well, your entire payday. Many bars were first introduced to hotel rooms in the 1960s, and unsurprisingly, it wasn't long before some tight-fisted guests developed ways to avoid paying their ridiculous prices. 
One trick involves drinking freely from the minibar before refilling the empty bottles with water and putting them back. Some guests also choose to eat the minibar snacks up until the end of their stay before heading to the store and restocking the minibar with the same snacks they ate, but at regular store prices. These tricks have worked for decades, but hotels have started to fight back against these snack-sized thieves by installing sensors into their minibars. These sensors constantly scan all of the food in the fridge, so as soon as you remove an item from the bar, your credit card is automatically charged. This charge is instant, so if you take a snack out to read the label, you'll have to pay for it, even if you didn't actually eat it. These shady practices are becoming increasingly common, so on your next vacation, I'd recommend asking the hotel to remove all the snacks from your room before you arrive. The last thing you want is to accidentally bump into your fridge, knock over a bottle of water, and end up doubling the price of your vacation. Key Cards Let's look at another piece of terrible technology that can completely ruin your vacation. Today, most hotels use electronic key cards instead of traditional metal keys as they're easier for both guests and staff to carry around and store in bulk. Despite these perks, the cards have serious drawbacks. And back in 2018, a cybersecurity firm called F-Secure made a terrifying discovery about the tech. After testing cards from several different hotels, they found that they could consistently take a single key card and use its data to create a master key that could open every door in the hotel. F-Secure noted that it didn't matter what door the key card was originally programmed to open, so if a hacker obtained any key card from a particular hotel, they could use the information contained within it to access locked rooms without anybody realizing. While F-Secure's approach used highly specialized software to generate a master key, replicating a single room's key is way simpler, requiring only a simple device that can identify and replicate the radio signature of the keycard's chip and copy it onto a blank duplicate card. Cybersecurity firms like F-Secure are working with keycard companies to improve the technology and make it less susceptible. But even if your hotel isn't targeted by a hacker, keycards can also malfunction. Back in 2016, two guests staying at the Roadway Inn in Gallup, New Mexico discovered that their keycards could open every room in the motel. When they told the owners, they were told that the error was caused by a key system malfunction that allowed every keycard to open every room. The notion that keycards can malfunction this severely is pretty scary. But it's also possible that the mistake was caused by the motel using them incorrectly and forgetting to assign the guest cards to a specific room. Not that that's particularly comforting. Whether the issue was caused by a technological glitch or a user error, it meant that anyone could have freely walked into any room. And considering the kinds of disgusting messes people seem to leave behind in hotel rooms, that surprise entrance could be just as horrifying for the intruder as for the occupant of the room. Now think about this. What do you do when you're on public transport, cleaning your house, or you generally just can't stare at a screen? Do you still want to learn amazing facts and have your mind blown? Well, I've got the solution. Be Amazed is now available in podcast form. Look up Be Amazed on all major podcast platforms. Follow us now on the podcast platform of your choice and you'll have the chance to win $500 of Amazon vouchers. We're giving $100 vouchers away to five lucky winners. All you need to do is slide into my DMs on Facebook or Instagram with a screenshot showing that you follow the Be Amazed podcast and left a top rating. Hurry, the competition ends on the 30th of September. Winners will be chosen at random and announced via our Facebook page. Unfortunately, every vacation has to come to an end, and it's time to end our trip through the secrets hotels don't want you to know. Do you know any other hotel secrets that I missed? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.